Hey, traders, this is Blake Morrow with Trader Summit. And with me today, I have the one and only Ryan Littlestone from Forex Analytics. Used to be a Forex Flow Live. Ryan, how are you? Yeah, not too bad, Blake. How are you? I'm doing great. You know, it's great to have you. Um, you know, here today, but it's also great to have you part of the Forex Analytics team because, you know, your your expertise um, in what you do is, in my opinion, it's unparalleled. I've been following you around for probably the last decade, back when you were with Forex Live, and um, you know, the your your strategies, your setups, your your views, and um, your especially your like macro views of key events like what we're going to talk about today or about the ECB are, like I said, it's unparalleled. So I'm so happy to have you here today. Yeah, thank you very much. You're making me blush now. So I'm <laughs> <been> all, <good. laughs> all right, all right. Enough about, enough, enough, enough stroking your ego. So tell us, you know, we, we have the ECB um, that's coming up this Thursday and we have, you know, the dollar has been really strong or I, I don't even know if you could say the dollar has been strong. The euro has actually been quite weak going into you know, the ECB meeting, there's a lot of, you know, there's not very high expectations for the ECB in the coming months as you start to see the Fed taper and, and, and kind of shrink what they've been doing. But what's the ECB going to do? What's our expectations going into Thursday? And what should be, people be thinking regarding the euro currency? Yeah, I think you're right. I think expectations are, are pretty low, you know, if we take a look at the, the bigger picture, you know, all central banks are, are starting to move in, in the same direction. You know, we're, we're getting rid of the emergency monetary policy that, that they've thrown at, uh, in buckets at the, the virus situation. Um, but as we know, with central banks, we get central banks moving at different speeds. Um, the ECB is one of the very, very slowest ones. We learned that over the, coming out of the financial crisis, you know, they had a chance to, to potentially raise rates and, and tighten up during that, and they didn't. They left it. Um, so they, they, they almost found themselves a few runs below all the other central banks when we hit the, this virus crisis. So, yeah, for the, for the longer term picture, we're, we're looking at whether the ECB is going to come out of their, uh, well, let's call it the PEP, the, the emergency uh, purchasing that they're doing at the moment. Yeah. Um, so like the Fed, you know, the Fed, we're pretty much nailed on to know about a taper, November, December. The ECB, we're a little bit unsure what they're going to do. There's talk, you know, whether they announce something towards the end of this year, maybe even Thursday, give us a little hint, maybe that they're going to decide something in December. But pretty much what they're potentially going to do into the new year with this PEP. Um, and the main expectations we've got is that they're going to roll a lot of this emergency stuff into their more normal QE, the APP. Um, so a bit like the, the Fed tapering, are they going to taper 10 billion, 15 billion, 20 billion? How much is the ECB going to roll from the emergency stuff into their normal stuff? It's, it's picking up from one basket and putting in another in, in reality, you know, yeah. and even that, their sort of taper is not a taper. It's just shifting, shifting the sands, if you like. But how much they actually move is going to be like the Fed and how much they're going to taper. So if, if they're only going to move 5 billion, that might be seen as uh, seen as fairly hawkish. Um, if they're going to move 50% of it, 75% of it into normal QE, well, the market's going to go, oh, here we go again. The ECB are just going to drag this out and drag this out. And, you know, once, we, once we've got those sort of numbers uh, and that direction, then the market's going to start pricing that. Then we're going to move on to rates. And we've already seen a, a bit of pricing for rates, uh, you know, the latter part of next year. Um, but th the market is so far away from pricing ECB rates. Um, you know, it's, it's unreal. It's going to take a lot to get us there. And I was going to say, you know, unlike what the market's pricing in for the Fed, but more, more, I don't want to say more importantly, but maybe something that I know you wanted to talk a little bit about the euro sterling, you know, the market's starting to price in some aggressive rate hikes coming out of uh, the, the Bank of England as well, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, and as you know, I've, I've been in a trade uh, since last year. You know, a bit on, on Brexit because I knew that was going to get solved one way or another, but also to run into this central bank divergence that we, we were hoping to see this year. And that's yeah. built up, as you said, over, as the year's gone on. The BOE is getting a bit, uh, sound like they're getting a bit aggressive on hikes. Again, that might be the market just reading a bit too much, again, a bit too far with that. Because again, you've got to differentiate between what is actual 
normalization of policy and what is removal of the emergency measures. So for the for the Bank of England, hiking rates from, from 0.1%, 15 basis points to, to 0.25, in my opinion, is just getting back to a, a bit of normality. It's not then going on a massive hike cycle. Um, but that's not to say that's not going to come once we see inflation, you know, what that picture is going to be like for the rest of, or into the early part of next year. So, but regarding ECB, yeah, you're quite right. This is what, what I love to trade is, is these, these central bank races, you know, the monetary policy divergence plays, because that's where you get your big trends and that's where you get your big swing. So I'm, I'm positioned, fortunately, with a decent amount of margin in a, in a euro sterling short, playing the ECB against the, the Bank of England. But that we can't dismiss the ECB entirely, you know, and for the euro, that's likely to be a, a great trade into to the, maybe the end of, uh, mid to end of next year. You know, one thing I think they're going to get caught out is, is, is this inflation stuff that's, that's piling into to everywhere. And they can't ignore it. They're not going to be able to ignore it. Um, and so once we know what the Fed's doing, once the, the market's settled on potential rate path for the Fed, once they've done that for the, for the BOE, Bank of Canada, everyone's going to go, boom, straight onto the ECB. What are these guys going to do? They're going to have to catch up. Okay, well, let's uh, let's stop here and let's take a look at like the uh, a chart of the euro. We're going to take a look at a daily chart of the euro and let's kind of walk traders through on how to play this because as as you can see probably on my chart now, you should be able to see my screen. Uh, the euro is back below one sixteen, struggled anywhere near the fifty day moving average. Um, we're we're near two thousand twenty one lows. So what do you do here going into the ECB meeting this week? But this one, as we said, you know, it's a bit of a tough one to call because it is looking a bit soggy, the euro. Are we going to get much from the ECB? I think the risk is it's potentially that, that we get some news from the ECB. You know, if it's hawkish, if, if we get in something definitive on the PEP and how much they're going to move, then we could see the market playing a bit of catch up here on, on the euro. We could see it pushing higher. You know, I'll be looking at somewhere up near 119 if, if it's big news uh, from the guard. Um, if we get a, a hint that they're actually going to get into some sort of real tightening path, you know, we could be heading back up towards a 120 level. But I think that the downside is potentially limited because although the market knows that they're going to be probably going to be slow about this, they're still in the mix. You know, we're not talking that they're not going to start increasing QE. They're not going to start, you know, cutting rates, going more negative or anything like that. We're on the pathways back to normalization, however slow that will be. So I think the downside will be limited. And the big areas you highlighted uh, there is the, the big 115 zone. You know, that's a, that's a huge level. It was a huge level on the way up, uh, you know, back through 2019, 2020. It's not a level you can ignore. Um, but we've got to listen to what uh, the ECB is saying and take our cues from that. If we get a move under there, um, that's a potential opportunity, in my opinion, to uh, lift it and, and see if we get a rally back up. You know when you when you talk about when you talk about the uh, and and you can see how big that one fifteen level is. It is a fifty percent retracement of this. This is the full uh, post uh, post COVID move, and you know this is huge support, big pivot as you pointed out. And if it drops below that, if you start thinking about the Fed, uh, you know ahead of the curve, if you will. So the dollar drops, but but the ECB will catch up. They will, as you pointed out, they will start to pull their levers as well. So that what what if I'm interpreting what you're saying correctly, is that, you know, if you do see a move below 115, and you do see a move, maybe let's just say roughly down to the 114, 113 level, this might prove to be a really good buying opportunity in the weeks ahead, as the ECB might have to play catch up to the Fed in 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 the coming months, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, but with these sort of trades, you know, you can't look at them on a, on a five minute basis, on a half hour basis. You can't even take just Thursday and think I'm buying the dip and going to sit on it and, you know, till right. next March or whatever. So if we do get a big break of 115, there's going to be some news behind it. And then my what I'm going to be thinking about is maybe, you know, scaling in some small positions, you know, maybe down to even the 110 area, because, you know, we can't ignore what the Fed might still do. And that's going to be a big boost for the dollar. And there's, as you said, they're still ahead in this in this uh, monetary policy divergence race. So you know, if they suddenly turn really hawkish on rate hikes, we're going to be seeing potentially one ten down there. But that's when I'll start to think, okay, you know, maybe come January, 
let's start to build a little bit of a long down here. Let's you know, add in at, at the levels all the way down, pick my assessment areas, just build into a position, you know, don't have to be huge risk. But when I trade long-term trades, you know, you avoid all the noise. You don't, you're not interested in the what central bank speakers popping up on a Thursday afternoon. Yeah. You know, you're building your position for the long term. And this is something that potentially would be a build for the rest of 20, uh, 2022. Um, so it's something I could sit in for, you know, four, five, six, 12 months, like I have been uh, pretty much for this Euro sterling trade. All right. Well, you know, before we we turn your attention to the euro sterling, you know, this is something that uh, that that I know uh, not only myself, a lot of lot of people have looked at is this is a multi year trend line in the euro, and this this will play in exactly to what you're thinking is you know to come back and retest that trend line. You know, you're talking about a move that would take us down towards one twelve to one ten. Maybe that is the buying opportunity that people will be looking for, and when you have a longer term you know, ECB trying to play a catch up to the Fed, maybe going into 2022. So I think that's a great view. And I think that's a great plan of action uh, moving into this, uh, the moving into this week and, and in the weeks ahead. So let's talk a little bit. I'm going to, I'm going to shift gears over to the, the, the uh, Euro Sterling. This is the Euro Sterling. Here's the daily chart. This is, uh, you know, all of 2020. You can see a, a chart of 2020 here. And as you've rightfully played, Ryan, You've said on the daily webinars on Forex Analytics, you talked about your core short Euro sterling position. You've been right on the money. 200 day moving average is really rejected price. That comes in now at 86 pence. So, what are you thinking here? Um, what are you thinking here as we head into the ECB meeting? And, you know, we're, we're not too far off of, you know, 2021 lows. I mean, they, 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 they're down at 82, 83. And here yeah. we are just, you know, um, flirting with the 84 pence level. So what are you thinking here? Yeah, pretty much exactly the same. You know, we've, we've got some decent levels up above 86, uh, 87, 87, 20, you know, pretty fairly tight after we got the, the big move down earlier in the year. Um, it's been a bit sideways, but the, the, the trend has, has continued lower. Uh, as you know, from, from a daily webinars, I've been pulling my hair out what, what's left of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, over, over getting a, a proper break below, but it's it's just going at a snail's pace. Um, well, 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 just 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 for some context here, uh, you know, I I've, I actually traded the opposite of you a couple of weeks ago, and I started pulling hair out, and I might look like you soon if I continue to do that. So so yeah. right on you. So <laughs> yeah, join the Shiners Club. Um, but uh, yeah, we we keep we keep edging lower. You know, the next. You know, stumbling block we've got at the moment is the 84 handle. Uh, we know there's a lot of options activity around there. Um, but what I'm looking for here is, be, is in this central bank race, you know, the Bank of England potentially going to be looking at getting more hawkish, as we're saying. Even if the market expectations, you know, build up and, and the bank don't deliver, those expectations can carry this through the 84 handle, you know, maybe into the end of the year, early next year. And then we could be seeing anything down towards the, you know, the low 83s, maybe even the, the mid to low 82s. And on a, on a wide view, that's my, that's probably where I'm looking to, to exit most of the trade. Once I get that big move, once I get the, the markets priced, fully priced in uh, a realistic Bank of England, that again is when I'm going to be start thinking, right, I've had my run, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm short up from 91, uh, 88. So I've got plenty of margin in the trade. That's where I'll be thinking, right, now it's time to take profit because the Bank of England's pretty much all priced. Again, we're going to switch to the ECB. What's the ECB going to do? Their turn to play catch up. And that's when I might be figuring now's the time to maybe play along, again, build in some, some small positions against the levels that uh, we identify. And, and sit on it for a while and see, again, if we can get that move back up. And, you know, it could carry in all the way back to the 90s, something like that. You know, when, when central banks get moving and when the market really gets priced in something, that's when you when you get the big trends. Um, you know, this is this is something I played, uh, going back to Euro, this is something I played in, in 2017. Um, remember when every, everything was uh, crapping out and the whole world and his mate were calling for uh, parity in the Euro? Yeah. Um, well, I was buying it from 106 down to 103, I think I got my lowest, maybe 102s I got in, um, right down there. Um, and I sat on that for a year. 
you know, and, and the market, yeah, flapped out. We're going to get parity in the euro. The euro's doomed. Everything's doomed. And I'm sitting there watching inflation ticking up um, for the first time uh, in, in a blue moon. And again, this was after everyone else. This was after the Fed was done their taper when they were moving to a rate height cycle. And everyone's thinking the euro is going to collapse. And no, it's not. It's going to go the opposite way because the economy is recovering. Inflation is recovering. And off it went, you know, and I, I sat in that for a year and, and you know, made some good money. Um, so these these are the big trends that, that traders really want to get into. When you're talking central banks, they're, they're the be all and end all when it comes to speculative trading in the markets. You know, that's what, because it moves everything, bonds, stocks, the whole world moves on, on what, what rates that, are doing. That is a really uh, key point. You know, it's like you, you, you look at stocks and people go, oh, you know, well, what's, what's driving the stock market? Ultimately, it's earnings, right? So when you're dealing with currencies, ultimately, it's interest rates and interest rate expectations. And that's bottom line, what moves the, the FX market. And so, you know, I, I try to take the point of view as a trader uh, and who tends to be a little bit more active that, you know, there's obviously a lot of different ways to skin a cat and you tend to be more of a long-term macro view in the FX market and where, you know, a lot of other people might be more scalpers just trying to make a little bit here and there and trying to manage and mitigate risk. So I think it's a, it's a great um, approach to the market. And I think you've done a really wonderful job in your trades and identifying what the big macro movers are. So let me ask you this, Ryan, as we wrap things up, uh, I, I'm a trader. Um, I, I didn't catch you on Forex Live. I didn't, I didn't know you back then, but I'm hearing about you now. How do I find out more about the Ryan Little Littlestone? Come and join our chat room. You know, that, that's where I like to be most active. Um, you know, come and see us at Forex Analytics, follow us on Twitter, um, you know, for us at Forex Flow Live, um, you know, I like to I like to engage with traders. You know, one of the reasons that I started up a chat room and one of the reasons why we merged is because I love that environment. I love you know being able to to give the, my advice to traders and help them out where they where they you know need it. But also, it's a bit selfish because you know I'm I'm from a trading environment. You know, I came out of the city. My whole start of my career was in the city. I've you know I've had the trading desk, the pit experience, and. When you're trading for yourself, sitting in the in an office in your house, you know, you miss that vibe. And so, things like chat rooms and communities are very important for me as a trader to bounce ideas off, to hear other people's opinions, to hear your opinion, Blake. You know, and, and all the other great traders, uh, the, the Forex Analytics team, because it just helps you. It just helps you bounce things around. It helps you clarify things, or you know, maybe something you didn't think of that someone else has thought of. So yeah, you know, if you if you want to come and uh, listen to my ramblings on a more regular basis, then obviously, yeah, come and, uh, come and have a look in the chat room. Awesome. Well, well, Ryan, I want to thank you very much for your views on, um, on uh, today on Traders Summit. And remember, guys and gals, if you're watching this on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up. It's free to do so. And it, you know, it's also free to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any interviews like Ryan's or anybody else that all, all the industry experts that are, are on here consistently. Ryan, I want to thank you for joining us today and giving us your views about the ECB. And, uh, you know, I want you to join us again in the very near future. Yeah, thank you very much for having me, Blake, and I uh, hope to see you soon. All right, thank you. Hey, traders, Blake Morrow here. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, click the bell notifications so you do not miss any of our market-related trading analysis from some of the leading industry experts. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you in the next video.